Hello, we're going to take a look at the reactivity series of metals. So when we talk about the reactivity series, we're often talking about the reactivity series of metals. And what we said here is that different metals have different reactivity. And we spoke about a couple of metals in our last video, and we talked about gold. I wish I had a lump of gold that big. But we talked about gold, the symbol being AU, and we said it was very unreactive. It didn't react with oxygen at all. In fact, it doesn't react with anything else either. But we can look at the reaction of something like lithium in water. So let's take a look at that. Just dropped a tiny bit of lithium in just some ordinary tap water. And you can see that compared to gold, it's much, much, much more reactive. It floats on the surface. There's a fizzing sound that you might just be able to hear. And it actually floats around, makes a ball shape and releases hydrogen gas and then disappears very quickly as it reacts with the water. So that's a much more reactive metal than our gold. Now, lithium is would be, if we made a list of lithium compared to gold, it's only two metals, but if we made a list of them, lithium would be higher up as the more reactive metal, and gold would be further down. And the reason why lithium is more reactive is because it will much more easily make positive ions. So it easily makes positive ions by losing electrons. Let's move gold out of the way for a bit more space. And the reason why it makes positive ions is it loses an electron. So lithium being in group one has one electron in the outer shell and it will very easily lose that electron to become a positive ion and that's why it's so reactive. So we could say that the reactivity of, of metals is linked to their tendency, their tendency to make positive ions. There we go. So that's quite important to know that. So lithium would be higher up compared to gold, which would be very far down if we had the most reactive metals at the top. Now, we could look at a few more metals. So we could look at the reactions of some more metals in water. And let's have a quick look at that now. So the first one, actually, we've done already. This was lithium. This is from our group one. And just as a reminder, as we saw, it floats on the water, makes a ball. It floats around, produces hydrogen gas. And in fact, if you remember from the uh, previous video, it will make uh, alkali in the water. That's why it's an alkali metal. But there's our reaction of our first metal, lithium. If we look at our next metal further down, which is sodium, you can just about see it in the middle there. You'll see it more as it starts to react. But that reacts a little bit more vigorously, a faster reaction. It fizzes quite a bit more, producing more hydrogen. And if we had the same amount as our lithium, it would disappear slightly more rapidly. Our last one is a metal called potassium. And hopefully you've got a chance to see this in class. But as soon as we put our potassium in there, we get a very, very vigorous reaction. It actually catches fire. We get a few small explosions and a lilac flame. So here are some stills from our videos. And we can see that lithium reacts slightly less than our sodium. And if you look at the last diagram there, there's a freeze frame from the video of the potassium exploding. Pretty cool, I think, to get a little freeze frame like that. But anyway, let's get rid of those pictures. And we can now put these in order of reactivity. So we know that the potassium is most reactive, sodium is next, and then lithium is after that. We could take a look at another metal, magnesium, to see where that goes on our list. And we could put that in some water and take a look and see how that reacts compared to the other three. So here's our magnesium in water. I've got one piece there. I think I put in two pieces, put a second piece in as well, just to see if there's any faster reaction. Didn't see very much. You can see the timer going off there. And as there wasn't very much happening, we can speed the video up to see if anything happens at all. And in the time allocated that we looked at it, it wasn't very much that happened at all. We could actually uh, leave it for a bit longer and we would eventually see some hydrogen being given off but actually the reaction is much slower than the three metals that we've already looked at so that magnesium would go further down and as we know the most reactive is at the top and the least reactive goes down at the bottom and in fact if we wanted we've got one other metal we've dealt with and that's gold we could put that and that goes all the way down at the bottom there so we call this the reactivity series it's a list of our metals in order of reactivity with the most reactive at the top 
and the least reactive at the bottom. Now what we could do is actually look at the reactions of these metals not only in water but we could test their reactivity in oxygen or the reactivity with oxygen. We could test their reactivity with or in acid as well and we can use that for further evidence to see which metals are reactive compared to others. So here's our magnesium in acid. So there was hardly any reaction in water, but if we put it in some acid, we can see that the reaction is much more rapid, much more vigorous. And in fact, that's giving off hydrogen as well. Okay, so that's just to show the reaction of magnesium in acid compared to with water. And what we can do is produce a table like this. We've got the metals on the left-hand side, and we've got the reactions with oxygen, reaction with water, and the reaction with acid, and we can make, make a note of what actually happens in each. For the reaction in oxygen, that should actually say they burn in oxygen. Burn in oxygen, whereas further down from zinc down to lead, they don't actually burn in oxygen, but if, you're, if you heat them enough, they will um, form a metal oxide when heated. We can see there that we have reactions that increase as you go down. Most reactive at the top, as we said, least reactive at the bottom. And probably worth just putting a note here about the loss of electrons. So the most reactive lose electrons much more easily to become positive ions, whereas the ones further down, the least reactive, don't actually become positive ions. They don't lose electrons. So there's our reactivity series. With water, you can see the reaction gets less as you go down. And the same with acid, we get a violent reaction with the top three. Uh, less violent, but still quite a vigorous reaction. We sometimes do magnesium in acid, but we wouldn't do the top three in acid in class. And as you go down, again, the reaction gets less and less. We have carbon and hydrogen in this list as well, and we'll see why that is in a future video. It's basically to compare reactions and to make predictions, but we'll, we'll see that in detail later. Okay, so a video to introduce the reactivity series and how we make observations to put the metals in order of reactivity.